Alright, so this is um, the video for lesson 8 continued. We just finished doing the homogeneous column 2D, we call that mixed 2D. So um, you should have watched that first before you start this one because that one has a lot of background information that I provided. And on top of that, we made the mistake of missing that uh, keyword zone in specified permeability. So hopefully that um, help you remember. This is very important. Um, and then you have, um, I, th I guess that's the value of making mistakes from my side and then you see how things are fixed and all that. Okay, so here we are going to, in this one, I'm going to talk about how to do the one zone case. And again, we are doing um, would be specifying all the different keyword blocks starting from st specify the domain and then flow and then transport and then the reaction uh, no, then the initial condition, boundary condition all that, so we'll be following that order um, now first let's also start with discretization and again we're using 25 by 100 grid blocks 2500 grid blocks um, so essentially, you would have the same discretization, for example, just like um, what we did before for um, the homogeneous case. Distance, units, and you would have millimeters, and then you have x zones. 5 and spacing 1.0 mm millimeter. Y zones, you have 100, again 1.0 millimeter as a spacing. And then um, you're going to specify your domain. But now we cannot specify porosity directly because there's average porosity, but there's also porosity in different zones that they are different. The middle zone is magnesite. The outside zone is a quartz, and they have different porosity. So we are not going to specify fixed porosity. So here we are going to just do maybe porosity update, whatever it is. And then we do need to specify the minerals because different minerals are in different parts of the column. So you actually will need magnesite. You will also need quartz, um, and then you will be specifying different mineral in different parts of the column. So let's do flow first, just like what we did before, because you do need to calculate is flow, the flow units are all everything you need to calculate the flow field. So again, we are doing time units being seconds. And then you have distance units being um, meters. And then you have calculate flow. True. Um, so then you will be specifying permeability. So when you specify permeability, when you do default, you do need to really specify your zone. Um, so I'm going to specify for everything to be 8.74 e minus 30, which is the uh, permeability of the quad zone first. So when I do default, that means the whole domain has this permeability. Why do I do that? Because then I don't need to specify um, separately. Later on, I will overwrite the magnes overwrite. I will specify the magnesite part and then overwrite that. So this is a permeability of you kind of specify for the whole domain default. You just don't specify zones. But then I write later on permeability x for the magnesite zone is we calculate that in the before the doing this simulation is um, for the middle zone right so you have one centimeter 
width of magnesite zone and in the middle and then 0 0.75, 0 0.75 to in the two other side. So in terms of grid blocks, you would have 8 to 18. Actually, it should be 9 to 18. Is um, sorry. Is the middle magnetized zone. Also have this. thirteen points. So that's for the magnet side. Well, this will be Y. So that's the specify the magnet side zone. Okay, so by doing that, okay, so first of all, here I specify everywhere it has this value. Now later I specify in this, these zones, you I have would have these values. So this part of the zone will be overwritten by these values. And the region one that is not specified is, is going to remain the same. So you, you still have cross zone have this value, but the middle magnet side is going to be overwritten by these values. And then again, we are going to specify um, permeability x, like the no flow boundaries. And you would have zone 0, 0, 2, 6, 2, 6. So these are the ghost cells from, I'm sorry, 0 to 0, 1 to 100, 1, 1. And then probability x zero, and then again this zone is very important. Twenty six, twenty six. Actually, I might made a mistake in the previous mix. It should be really the ghost cell outside of the gray block one for x, gray block twenty five for x, um, because these are the no flow boundary. Again, this will be no flow. So if I made a mistake, make sure you know that it was a mistake. No flow boundary. All right. That's permeability. And then we need to specify pressure. Let's see, again, we put the value 0.1 everywhere. This doesn't really matter. The code we essentially use Darcy's law given the heterogeneous distribution of permeability and then do the calculation. So whatever initial value is going to be erased, but we don't want to leave it undefined. Pressure in the um, inlet will be 3890. We, we did the calculation in the, before we do the simulation. So it's be again, specify zone will be in the 1 to 25 in the ghost cell. Just before you have gray block one. one, one fix, and then you have pressure zero again. Zone one to twenty five. That's x, and then y is a hundred one, hundred one fix. Okay, so that's a flow. So you are supposed to have everything you need to calculate the flow field. And let's look at transport. Okay, transport will be very similar to what we had before. That we need all these dispersion, diffusion related distance units. Again, will be centimeters, time units, seconds. And then I'm going to do the same fixed diffusion as what we did in the previous one, 6.34 to 
2 e minus 6 and then you have cementation exponent cementation dispersivity dispersivity again the first one is for x and this the other one is for um, y so you have according to the number in the table you have 0 0.004 0 0.07 centimeters for the two dispersivity so that's for the um, transport and then we need to specify specific of the column now in here you have two different zones. One is a reactive, one is a cross zone, the other is a magnetized zone. So we actually specify the two minerals. Um, first of all, we need to specify the primary species. Now I talked about before this is tracer test, so we definitely will need bromide. But also I mentioned as long as you put different minerals, you need all the elements, building blocks for the that. Um, Mineral. So for magnesite, you will need Mg2+, plus, and then because it's MgCO3, right, so you will also need Cu2Aq, you need carbonyl species. For quartz, you will need the aqueous species SiO2, Aq, but also it is in water, so let's just put H plus there. Just in case some of, for example, magnesite is written in terms of H plus. Um, and then second species, then you will need OH minus. This species doesn't really matter in the tracer test, but it will be important later on. But since we are going to specify different mineral zones in the, even we are only for the physical process, we do need all the chemical building blocks. So CO2 AQ, then you need bicarbonate. Um, carbonate species, uh, I believe that's it, okay, and then, okay, so these are primary species, and then you need to specify your inlet, let's just copy all the primary species there, because we know we need that, um, inlet, just like what we had before, units, um, to do molar yeah just to be consistent let's still do molar temperature you have bromide okay inlet you have bromide concentration of 1.210 e minus 4 um, magnesium we know we consider it's clean water so let's just put very low concentration there um, here we also put very low concentration uh, SiO2 very low concentration because it this doesn't really matter at this point and maybe we put a pH of 7.0 shouldn't really matter because it's not going to do calculate that much anyway. So for the condition, in the column we have cross zone we, and we have magnesite zone. But so essentially we will need both of these um, and then primary species um, this will be in, in, so this will be an initial in the quartz part, so let's see, still do by low concentration bromide. But here, not these are specifying the aqueous phase now we are also going to specify the solid phase, right? And for quartz zone, we talk about um, the positive quartz zone is 0 0.38. So I mean the solid phase is 0 0.62. So you would have quartz is essentially volume fraction of 0.62. And that uh, and you put magnesite because you don't have magnesite there you are going to put very low value. So essentially, that will give you, the code will ca calculate, OK, you have this much solids um, with a total solid phase of 0.62. Then it will calculate porosity. B 
being point point three eight. Just I'm just making notes here. Okay, so for magnetic zone, we'll be still having the whole thing, but uh, except the solid phase is different. Because for magnetic, you still have initial condition, not much of these species, but now your quads will be very small number. And then your magnetic, remember your mag magnetic uh, property is 0.54. So your magnetic more uh, volume fraction should be 0 0.46, right? So that uh, adding up to be 1. So you have it, the different conditions, just to avoid confusion. All right. Um, so that's the three conditions, inlet, quartz, magnesite. Now let's specify for the initial conditions, you would have um, At first, let's specify the whole domain. So there are more quads in the set. Let's specify the whole domain being quads. So you will put in like 1 to 25, and then 1 to 100, 1, 1, 4 quads. So that's saying, OK, everywhere you have quads. But then I'm going to overwrite that, the middle part, which is 9 to 18. will be the magnesite, will take in the magnesite initial condition. So that would give you specified initial condition. Then we need the boundary condition. Where's the boundary condition? OK. For the boundary condition, um, it will be very similar. x begin, y begin, x um, will be inlet. X X and let's say you do quads, it doesn't matter much. It's inlet that is important. And Y begin Y and So it was again, it will take whatever that is coming out of a column. It shouldn't really matter. Boundary condition. Um, and then you have output again, you need to specify how frequently you want things to, how long do you want to run, how frequently you want output, where do you want output, spatial profiles, specify. Uh, let's do it the same as what we had before. Point zero one, point zero, zero point one five, and maybe then zero point two. So run the same time as the previous one, um, and then we let's do the time series output for maybe also for the middle. But if you want to look at every outlet block, you you are welcome to do that. You don't have to have only one. For example, you can specify 25 different time series for all the alternate blocks. Let's say I'm just doing another one time series. Breaks through. Let's say I'm looking at 20. And then you'll be specified 20, 100, 1. Right, so these you have now you have two different groups. You are looking at the thirteen square block in the outlet cross section, and then twenty square block in the outlet, and then you you will be output. Since this is a tracer test, so all we all it matter to us is bromide, and then we have time series interval should be. Whatever, 4 or 10 or whatever it works. All right, so that seems um, all we have. Just kind of quickly looking through. I usually try to 
be clear about what I put in and what are keywords and not make it too clouded. So I'm going to separate that because a lot of time it's easier to see. Okay. So I line it up, boundary condition. Transport Placity Discretization Minerals For minerals, it's important you realize that for the name of the minerals, you need the capital in the first letter, otherwise, the code doesn't recognize it. Um, and then flow, and then you define all oh, the character flow. Permitted value, permitted value. Make sure I have all the zones there when I define specific zone for certain numbers. Zone, zone, okay. Alright. Primary species, second species, initial condition, quads, magnesite. That's consistent with. Let me see. Initial condition. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it's consistent with permitted that I set up. Okay. Condition inlet. Condition inlet, you are putting high concentration bromide. And then condition quads. Magnesite, you're putting specific volume fraction quads and various fraction of magnesite for them to be adding up to be one with porosity. All right, so it looks like all right. Um, let's try it. Okay, so it looks like it's taking in, and uh, we didn't make mistake again this time, which is good. Um, okay, so first time step is speed it out, and I want to point you to the velocity. So the reason there's velocity and velocity evolve is because I'm putting proxy update, so the code will try to update the proxy, although there's no reaction going on or anything, but that's fine. Um, and then you have porosity. So let's look at velocity. Um, you will realize the velocity is different for different zones, as you can see. And that's more or less because we have different permitting different zones. So for this 2D, um, you will need to either plot out the spatial profile in 2D, uh, in like TechPlot or MATLAB, whatever software you use. Um, now, only plot I, the, the x velocity is not very meaningful, so I would say you just plot the x, the, the y velocity, which in direction of the flow. And you realize, okay, y is 1.07, they, they all have same units. You can go back and check what's the corresponding, for example, in meter per day or something. But in any case, this is 1.07, this is 1.68, because we just have two zones. And you can imagine this will be the one um, in the middle zone that magnesite have a little bit higher uh, permeability. In any case, you um, if you divide 1.68 to 1.07, you get about point, uh, 1.6 or something. And you realize, you might realize in that when you put the input file, the permitted value of the magnesite zone is about 1.6 times of the quad zone. So that's so essentially the 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 flow is distributed according to the permitted values. And if you plot this, it should come up with, for example, flow velocity distribution somewhat like the figure one that we showed with different flow velocity and everything in different places. Um, let's see, okay, still calculating. Seems really slow for some reason. It's to the 6.35 times 10 to minus 2. Okay, still have a bit of time to go. 
um, because we have more species and even we don't really care about these species we just have to put it, them there and the code will try to calculate everything I'm sure so it's slower than the homogeneous column um, but in any case the breakthrough um, so for the velocity and actually for them let's look at total condition Okay, so you have X and Y, and then you have all different species, but all your K is bromide, right? So you are, you will be looking at the third column. Um, when you try to calculate the overall breakthrough, imagine, okay, you have a 2D, and then in each of the, uh, the grid block in the outlet, you have, for example, let me just go back. It's probably easier to explain with the figure. Is this really should be X and uh, Y, not X and Z. Yeah, I will change that. But in any case, this is your x direction and this is your y direction. So um, the outlet will come out through velocity different in the when y equal to 100. This will be y equal to 1, y equal to 100, right? And this is x. So um, you will have different flow velocity coming out um, from each of the outlet break grid box, you will also have different concentration coming out because of different point bidding. So what I'm asking you to do, for example, I specify a little bit. Um, the concentration average, imagine, okay, what when we take sample, we be actually only have one outlet, not like everywhere you have you have a sampling point. So is that one outlet is actually integrating all the concentration and flow velocity out of it. So you, when you calculate average breakthrough, you actually use the weighted, flow rate weighted average to do the calculation. So it will be need to be like CI coming out from each of these times uh, VI and cross section I of each out of this. Um, that way you get the flow velocity, flow rate times concentration, which is mass per time for all the integrating summation of all 25 grid block and divided by the overall flow rate. That gives you the, the kind of average breakthrough. So what do you need to do when you look at these? Would it be, um, let me just look, maybe it's here, okay. Um, you look at bromide and you will be looking at y equal to 100 and you sample each, you get each value the flow velocity, cross section area is the area of the grid block time porosity, right? Velocity times that cross section area times the concentration is what you get for each grid block and then you add them up divided by the overall um, flow rate. So that's what you are going to do when you do the breakthrough curve. And you are going to see a bit of difference in the mixed column and in the 2D column. I'm not going to tell you at this point, but in any case, this is what you are going to do. Okay, now we are at 0.16, so we have a little bit, um, I think we specify to 0.2, so you still have a little bit of time to go. So that's total concentration. The point beta will give you uh, the distribution of the point beta in different in different parts of the grid block. These have the units of log ten meters square. So these are the in the it's these are in log units. Um, pH porosity. Right, you have x, y, and then you have process somewhere. Okay, for the magnetic zone, you have you have fifty four is fifty four percent. Okay, percent porosity, and so the eight is thirty eight percent. So these are the output values. Let me see. Weight. We're not really interested in that. So it has velocity. If it, you do have Thing dissolving out, it will be updating the porosity, permeability, and everything. 
according to the proxy permutation in the code, and that actually will um, give you different distribution of proxy permitted from the initial values over time. Okay, I think we are done. Everything is out, and um, all you need to do is parse things out and and look at the difference in in the breakthrough curve. Think about why they are different, um, and you would do be interesting to see. What, think about how they are different, why they are different, and all that. And I think this is the one zone example with heterogeneity, um, and you can specify all that. So there's another option, let's say if you have kind of random distribution of permeability, we can specify in another separate file and read in other code to read permeability um, for like irregular shaped um, heterogeneity distribution. And this I'm, we're not going to cover, it's a little bit too complicated for now. So I'm going to stop here. And I'm sure you will have fun. Um, it's it's a little bit take a little bit more work, but it's also very interesting, and uh, very useful when you think about the heterogeneity of system, how physical processes are different, and later on there will be another um, session in Unit Three. We'll be talking about two D reactive. So this is really building the physical process for that unit later on for the reactive one. All right, I'm going to stop here. Um, I think it's this a bit too long, so we have a 